To remain updated with the latest business news, click on the bell icon. Presented by Ebix Cash. Har khushi ke liye kafi hai. Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. I am Uday Mukherjee. There's been so much talk over the last few months, indeed last couple of years on the India manufacturing opportunity. We are used to knowing India, recognizing India as a big services hub. But over the last year, there's been a lot of chatter about India emerging as a manufacturing destination finally. I mean there was Atmanirbhar Bharat, Make in India, PLI, China plus one, so many terms floating around and the company right in the thick of it is Dixon. Because it not only manufactures LED lights and television sets and washing machines, but it's now increasingly getting into mobile phones, even refrigerators and laptops. Uh, and it really is at the heart of this huge manufacturing and manufacturing export opportunity that is finally opening up for Indian companies. So it's wonderful to have on the show today, Sunil Vachani, founder chairman of Dixon. Sunil, it's wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you again for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Uh, well, tell me, is this whole PLI China plus one opportunity real? I mean, how, how real is it? Because, you know, we are always skeptical about India emerging as a manufacturing powerhouse. I mean, so many decades have passed and it's never quite come, come together. Do you think this is the moment where a transformative change is happening in manufacturing here? Yeah, then I believe, uh, you know, that PLI scheme is absolutely a game changer. Uh, and I think a uh, few reasons I say that. Uh, one, I think... The PLI scheme will help the industry create a large scale, uh, which we really require uh, to be competitive globally. Uh, two, I think it will also help us create a strong and vibrant component ecosystem, uh, which has been missing in the past. Uh, three, I think this scheme will also help build Indian champions. Uh, because as you know, in the PLI scheme, there are two tracks, one for the multinational companies and one for the Indian companies. So just to give an example, uh, if you look at the PLI scheme for mobile phones, uh, so the multinational companies get incentives only on phones above $250, uh, whereas the Indian companies get incentives on all sorts of phones. So I think this scheme will help build five or 10 large Indian champions who will have large scale investment in backward integration and also will be designing their own products. So I'm very, very confident that this uh, PLI scheme will definitely bring in results in the long term. And I think we're already seeing that in the numbers. Uh, if you see the total consumption uh, in India of all the electronic products and home appliances, uh, it's about roughly about $130 billion. And I think it's a matter of great pride that uh, just in the last year, almost $75 billion worth of goods were manufactured in India. Uh, so I think the results are already showing on the ground. And I think it's a matter of time that uh, we start looking at even global markets rather than just uh, you know addressing the local markets and, and fulfilling the domestic demand. Tell me something, Sunil. You use the word competitive and that's the nub of my question because incentives are for a certain period. But when these incentives start to get rolled back or faded away, do you think Indian companies will be able to compete globally without the crutch of that incentive? Because that's the fear that the in incentives help you build up but once they are taken away, you're no longer globally competitive. Is that a fear? So uh, if you look at uh, manufacturing in India, uh, you know, we have certain unique advantages. Uh, we have a large pool of low cost labor. Uh, you know, we have the favorable government policies. We have a large domestic market, uh, which helps us build that scale. Uh, but obviously we all know that there are certain disability factors which are there and, and those uh, disability factors are in the form of high finance costs, uh, high land acquisition costs, high power costs, and of course the high logistics costs because of the uh, you know poor infrastructure. Uh, so I think what this scheme does is that it helps the Indian companies really overcome or mitigate the disability factors. And your point is absolutely right that yes, the scheme is only there for the you know for let's say five years, and I think that's the challenge in front of the industry that we need to ensure that we are globally competitive in these five years and we don't depend in, on any of these subsidies or the schemes. And I think uh, to, to do that, to become globally competitive, the Indian industry uh, needs to invest in design-led manufacturing. The Indian industry needs to invest in a strong component ecosystem, as I mentioned. 
and also of course the industry needs to create a world class infrastructure you know those factories which can compete let's say with our neighboring countries uh, but the good thing is that i think the industry is very conscious of this uh, and and really what needs to be done and i think a lot of uh, the companies are already working on it at least i know we are uh, definitely working on it very aggressively and i am very confident uh, that we as a country and we as an industry and as a company we will be globally competitive uh, in the next 5 years uh, without any sort of subsidies and to tell you honestly in some sectors in some industries and i'm sure i would uh, tell you later uh, we are already competitive because we already have the scale and there's a high value addition uh, in those sectors so let's look at this example of uh, led lighting industry uh, and i think thanks to the aggregation model of the government of india where you know the government was buying led bulbs from uh, from manufacturers uh, we have a large scale of manufacturing already in the country and i think this is one sector where there is also high value addition almost 70% of the components are manufactured locally and i see that sectors like these uh, are already competitive without any government subsidy yes i want to ask you about a sunrise sector because that's been a problematic area over the last year for many indian co- uh, companies which consume semiconductor chips you know auto industry etc have been hobbled by, because of issues to do with imports of semiconductors but now it seems that the government is trying to create a semiconductor ecosystem out here uh, i mean the pli scheme on fabs is a good example do you think we have the capability of creating a successful viable semiconductor system in india where we are not overly reliant on imports uh, see there were two things which were happening uh, as far as the components of the semiconductor shortage is concerned one what there wasn't enough capacity uh, bring uh, till globally you know because uh, the demand really wasn't going up uh, to uh, post the pandemic we saw that the demand suddenly shot up for all devices you know, post pandemic we saw there's a huge demand for data and devices so i think this has led uh, to a huge shortage as we know of components and especially uh, semiconductors and i think it is uh, absolutely uh, amazing that you know india right now is trying to look at attracting investments into the sector uh, we've seen the policy which has come out for uh, attracting large investments in the semiconductor space uh, uh, the issues of course that you know we are at a time where i think a lot of countries are looking at you know doing the same thing which is attracting investments in the sector uh, so that way it's it's definitely a little tougher uh, to get these large companies to come in india but looking at the policy that has come in it is so attractive uh, and i feel that uh, india would be one of the most attractive places to invest in right now uh, because let's not forget we also have one of the lowest uh, corporate tax rates for manufacturing companies so combine that with the incentive of pli uh, combine that with the new semiconductor policy uh, also combine that with the state government incentives and i you would see that we have one of the most attractive packages as compared to any country in the world it must be so exciting for you to be in the cusp of this transformative change sunil because it was not always this easy right i mean i remember when i was growing up as a young man i used to uh, see all these western tvs and vcrs that you and your family used to manufacture those were must have been completely crazy days to own anything in manufacturing in india uh, is it too big a sea change for you to wrap your head around where we were where you started off and where we are what we are going through at this point in time Yeah no doubt these are very exciting times and we in the industry and the company are hugely excited at the opportunity that is in front of us and i think you know you absolutely right i remember when i first started uh, electronic hardware manufacturing and this was way back in uh, 1992 and i remember in the early days you know going to uh, the government uh, departments and you know and to the uh, uh, one of the senior bureaucrats who were met and i mentioned you know that this is what we want to do we want to make india the next hub for electronic hardware manufacturing and you know he he looked at me with amazement and he says you know you know are you serious about this because you know india can only be uh, strong in software that's where our strength is and that's where we can be leaders uh, so i think it took a while to convince uh, you know the particular person uh, and also particular it convinced a lot of people that yes india can be uh, the next hub for manufacturing and i think when people ask me that what is the biggest change that has happened in the last few years i would say the biggest change is the change in the mindset and when i say that the mindset of uh, you know the government and mindset of the entrepreneurs now we both believe that yes we have the capability and it's a matter of time that india emerges as the next hub for electronic hardware manufacturing so that's the biggest change 
since we are talking about this journey from the early 90s to the 2020s some people have actually been growing at the same time as you have tra transitioned from you know TVs and VCRs to this big opportunity the PLI opportunity today and you know some people like say Sunil Bharti Mittal I mean at one point you were making push button phones for Beetle uh, many many years ago and today you have a 51 percent uh, 50 you own 51 percent in a joint venture with Bharti in your uh, telecom business uh, so what's your equation with uh, Sunil Mittal been like all these years I mean do you regard him as a friend a business associate or even a mentor yeah so when this opportunity came to us uh, we were hugely excited and overjoyed and I think uh, a few reasons behind this one of course was the huge potential uh, that we saw in, in telecom manufacturing uh, uh, we see in the country right now that most of these products are imported when you look especially the uh, CPE which is the consumer premises equipment uh, and the area that you first getting into this joint venture uh, so we saw a huge opportunity in this and and uh, and i think the interesting other thing was that which very few people know that uh, uh, for me personally it was uh, you know it was uh, quite nostalgic and it was emotional because my first or one of my first orders that i got when i entered this industry was also from uh, you know sunil uh, and this was for order for push button phones and that time we had just partnered with at &T. Uh, so, you know, it's like coming back to, you know, where we started with push button phones and we're coming back to uh, manufacturing, uh, you know, for the same company. And I think uh, we're extremely fortunate to be partnering with uh, Sunil and, and Bharti Enterprises. And I think it's an iconic uh, brand, uh, an iconic company. And of course, Sunil is a great visionary. And uh, I think the first meeting that we had to discuss this, you know, uh, we barely discussed it for half an hour. I think because we were both convinced of the huge opportunity that is in front of us, uh, you know, this manufacturing space, the telecom manufacturing space. So, yeah, I think it's, it's a uh, big opportunity and we're completely very excited about this. On your mobile side, uh, where you have uh, relationships with companies like Motorola and Nokia, I want to ask you, you know, is this opportunity largely uh, build in India, make in India and sell in India? Or is it a bigger opportunity to make in India and export? I mean, not just for mobiles. I'll, uh, the same question holds for many other things that you make. Do you see yourself as actually a manufacturing hub for exports primarily going forward? Or do you see the India opportunity being bigger? So I think if we look at the mobile phone space, it, I think it's one of the most exciting spaces that we are in. Uh, one, because there is a large uh, domestic market uh, for mobile phones. India is the uh, fastest growing market for smartphones and I think it's a matter of time that we'll also become the, the top destination for manufacturing of these phones in the world uh, and also there is a large uh, market for export of these products uh, so if you look at the numbers right now the exports of mobile phones is roughly around 8 billion dollars and it's expected this number can go up to 100 billion dollars in the next five years so that's the kind of opportunity that's the size of the opportunity uh, that is in front of us uh, coming back to our foray to mobile phones, uh, so we've been in this sector for some time, and I think the PLI, as I mentioned, was a you know was a game changer, and uh, we were one of the five companies uh, selected uh, for the PLI, PLI opportunity, and I think it's it's a matter of great satisfaction that uh, we are one of the few companies which has crossed the threshold for the investments. We've already committed investments and made investments of more than two hundred crores. And also, we've crossed the threshold turnover that was a requirement under the PLI scheme. So, good, looking forward, going forward, uh, I think we see a huge future in exports. And the reasons are obvious that everybody is looking at uh, our neighboring country plus one uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, they are looking at uh, you know diversifying uh, their risk. Uh, and of course, our neighboring country is getting much more expensive. We know about what is going on there. Uh, so, I, and as I mentioned, also the government policies. So, there is no better place than India right now to manufacture these phones. Uh, and I think uh, eventually, we won't be servicing only the domestic market, but I think we'll be exporting uh, these phones all over the world. There is a lot of talk about how China has slipped from its, from its top pedestal in manufacturing globally. And a lot of people are looking at a China plus one kind of an option. Now, now is this thing real? Because, you know, it seems real notionally, but you are in the business of actually attracting a lot of people who are looking for a China Plus opportunity. I read that in your Daikin invert, uh, inverter products, there was probably an instance where somebody moved away from China and came to you. Can you tell us about that and 
really buttress this whole excitement about this China plus one opportunity? As I mentioned, you know, the reasons are obvious that why people are looking at the China plus one opportunity. Uh, there is the high power cost. There is the labor costs are just shooting up. Also, there is a huge shortage of uh, labor. And I think uh, there are two countries which are very, very well positioned to take care of this, you know, to take advantage of the situation and, and to take care, you know, to grab this opportunity. And I would say India and Vietnam are the two countries which can really emerge as the next hub. Now, if you look at the numbers in Vietnam alone, Vietnam exports almost $90 billion worth of electronic hardware products from the country. Uh, right. And there are a few manufacturers which really dominate that market. Uh, so Vietnam is a small country. If they are you know, exporting these kind of numbers, you can imagine what the opportunity uh, could be there for us in India. Uh, so I think this, this opportunity is for real and it's already happening. A lot of companies are in the process of shifting. A lot of companies are, uh, uh, you know, sitting at the fence uh, uh, and, and trying to get it. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm sure uh, that it's a matter of time uh, that we see a, a lot of companies coming into India and making India as the base for manufacturing for the world. Now, the one concern which one always has with contract manufacturing, the notion is that it's per se a low margin business. I mean, margins are between four and five. I mean, you were, we were talking about mobiles right now, where margins are probably between four and five percent. Uh, and, you know, the way commodity costs are moving up, you can get squeezed on your margin very easily. And, you know, when a four and a half percent becomes a three and a half percent, your business dynamic changes quite radically. Now, can you get this margin higher or is it only by blending products like you do some mobile and then you do some higher margin consumer electronics and in a blended business, in a blended way, you are fine. Is that the way you approach it or do you see any upward uh, room for margins in your business? See, Udin, I think you have to uh, you know, see this EMS industry or the electronic manufacturing services industry you know, in two buckets. So one is a prescriptive type of manufacturing, wherein you are manufacturing the product on a customer's design and his bill of material. So in that kind of prescriptive manufacturing, uh, a lot of the turnover is a pass-through turnover. So you would see in that kind of industry, the margins are much lower when you look in the sales. Uh, and second bucket is the ODM, where you design your own product uh, and you supply it to the brand. In ODM, the margins are much, much better. So our business and our, you know businesses of many other uh, EMS companies, it's a mix of these two. Uh, and at Dixon, it's, it's been our uh, vision and objective that we will be moving more and more towards our own design and manufacturing. Uh, so if you see products like home appliances, like washing machines, semi-automatic and fully automatic, we have 100% our own design. If you look at a product like lighting, it's almost 95% our own design product. Uh, and that is the vision across our product categories that slowly we will move to our own design and manufacturing. So once you do that, and once we do that, uh, you will see that our margins improving uh, tremendously uh, over a period of time. So can you give me a kind of a number? I mean, on a blended basis across products, if you were to say my OEM margins are this X, what would ODM be as a factor of X, ODM margins be? And if you were to look out, say, maybe three, four years, by which time Dixon will be a large company, much larger company, what would be the, in your, uh, in your expectation, what would be the mix of ODM and OEM in the business? See, Uthir, why uh, I mentioned that we are moving more and more to ODM, at the same time, the EMS or the OEM business will also grow substantially. So if you look at the mobile manufacturing space, there, it's almost 100% on prescriptive mode, right? We, we manufacture on the customer's design. Now, that business is also growing tremendously. Uh, we hope to do a turnover of almost about uh, 7,000 crores in the mobile phone business next year alone. Uh, so we see both businesses growing, uh, both the EMS and the ODM business. Uh, and, and we see that the margins over a period of time and other return ratios and other you know, ratios of company definitely going up. Uh, so to answer your question specifically on the EMS versus ODM, I think the ODM margins could be double of what we get in EMS uh, if you look in the absolute number. And maybe three, four years out, what would be the mix, uh, rough mix between ODM and OEM? I would say that, you know, uh, we could look at uh, maybe something like 50-50 between both of these things because now we are investing, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, into refrigerator space also, uh, which is again going to be completely ODM. Uh, uh, and also products like IT hardware, like laptops, which of course starts with a prescriptive board, but uh, eventually we also plan to get into the ODM manufacturing there. Uh, so over a period of time, I think we could look at a mix of 50% for both EMS and ODM. 
Tell me, I mean, we've spoken about LED lighting and mobile phones. What are the new areas that Dixon is excited about? Because I, uh, I know that you've got a tie-up with Acer on laptops, and I think you're getting into wearables in a big way as well. W what are the products of the future that you would be manufacturing? Um, so as you know, the company is already into the segment of consumer electronics, uh, which we have been there for a very long time. We are there in the home appliances space uh, and the mobile phones and the security systems. Uh, some of the new areas that we're usually excited about are the, of course, the IT hardware. Uh, that's a huge opportunity. Uh, as we know that India imports uh, IT hardware with almost about $5 billion annually. Uh, so I think there's a huge possibility for import substitution. Uh, we're also very excited about the uh, upcoming area of the what we call the wearables and the hairables, which includes uh, the smart watches, the fitness bands, uh, as, well as, as well as the uh, true wireless sound when we talk about the hairable products. Uh, so this is one area, uh, uh, you know, where uh, now the duty structure is also being corrected in the recent budget. As you know, earlier, uh, there was very little difference between the finished product as well as the components that go into it. Uh, the recent budget uh, announced a few days back has corrected this anomaly. And going forward, we see a large manufacturing shifting to the country as far as the wearables and wearables are concerned. And we've also done uh, a joint venture with Boat, which is again an iconic brand. Uh, and we're very excited about the opportunity. And this joint venture uh, will be looking at not only manufacturing the products, but for designing the products also in the country. That the probably is going to be the first time. Uh, uh, so these are two areas. And of course, the telecom, uh, JV, that we talked about with Bharti, there again, uh, it's, it's a, a huge opportunity that we're sitting on. Uh, and if, you know, initially, we plan to start with the consumer premises equipment. But eventually, we also plan to get into the high-tech manufacturing of, of the network equipment. Uh, so these are some of the areas. And I also talked about the refrigerator project, which is coming up in Greater Noida, where we are planning to invest uh, more than 200 crores. And this is one industry which is very large in the country. Almost 11 million refrigerators are sold in the country. Uh, so these are some of the areas that we are very, very excited about going forward. What are the key constraints, Sunil? Uh, because, you know, you spoke about land and labor earlier and cost of capital. Uh, I mean... To become a really large global manufacturing hub, I mean, for Dixon to really keep accelerating at the pace at which it has been growing for the last two, three years, if you had to worry about constraints, what would those be? Uh, see, I think uh, one of the biggest issues that we have uh, in the industry and the country is a lack of a strong and vibrant component ecosystem. And I talked about this earlier. So today, uh, if you look at uh, some of the verticals that we are in, we are uh, very reliant on imports uh, for most of these components. Uh, but I'm very happy that this is changing. And I think the government is also aware of this fact. And it was uh, very encouraging to see that the last PLI that came in for LED lighting and for air conditioners, the entire corpus of almost about 8,000 crores is being spent on incentivizing a strong component ecosystem. Uh, so I think this is one of the concern areas. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, that there are disability factors, uh, you know, when you're manufacturing in the country. Uh, but I think the great good thing is that the government is aware about these factors and the industry is aware about these factors. And uh, and I think both of the, both of us are really working on how we could remove these disability factors going forward. And as I mentioned, I'm very confident that in the next few years, we won't have to depend on any subsidies uh, to be globally competitive. I hope you're right, Sunil, and I wish you luck with all of this. Uh... T terrific and uh, really exciting times for you and for the manufacturing sector. But stay on top of it. Thank you very much for your time and for joining it today. Thank you. And thank you for having me on the show. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.